Welcome to the Teachers on Fire podcast, where 21st century educators come to share, learn, and be inspired. We believe in the growth mindset, creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and strategic uses of education technology. Our mission is to share news and views from teachers who are crushing it in the classroom and making a difference for learners everywhere. I'm your host, Tim Cavey. Let's jump into today's episode. Today, I'm speaking with Jade Ingalls. Jade is a grade five homeroom and PE teacher in Wabasca, Alberta. Jade, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Are you ready to talk education? Yeah, let's do this. All right, why don't you start by describing your current teaching situation? Okay, so um, I'm located in Wabasca, Alberta. That's about four hours north of Edmonton. Okay. Um, I currently teach at St. Teresa School, and I've just recently started this position in grade five. Um, In the community, there are roughly around, I think, give or take 2,000 people, um, and it's connected to a reserve called Demeray, so it's a First Nations community. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as um, any administrative duties that I would have or professional um, development or committees that I take part in. Um, I'm not expected to take on any of that just yet, as I'm just kind of getting my bearings at my new position. Um, As far as what I'd like to become the expert or what I'd like to specialize in at my school, I'm not really Mm -hmm. sure yet, but I'm waiting to find um, maybe just an open uh, niche or just a spot that needs to be filled at the school that I'm currently at. Um, So I'm just holding out for that. Um, On Friday, so in regards to professional development, I just went to an ever active uh, seminar at my school. Okay. Um, And ever active is an organization involved in educating kids on physical literacy and teaching them the fundamental movement skills Mm-hmm. Um, and really like what the fundamental movement skills are, is, are, um, they're involved in just like movement skills that all children should have so that they can live, um, an active life, um, up until they're an adult, um, okay. at my cool. former job. So I'll jump into that because I taught grade mm-hmm. five, um, before, mm-hmm. uh, in St. Paul, I taught math and LA to two different grade five classes. Okay. Um, And while I was there, um, I attended professional development on the Empowering Writers program and Mm -hmm. the Words Their Way program. And I was a representative um, from my school for Empowering Writers. Um, As far as like administrative or committee duties that I had at my former job, um, I was a part of the... um, professional development committee um, in the division. So I was a representative for my school. And just what that all entailed was we would get together, plan a division-wide PD conference for Mm -hmm. all the schools in the division. So um, what I would have to do is partake in meetings, take on tasks such as calling up speakers um, for... um, keynote um, presentations, finding out costs, organizing the catering for the event for (laughs) high school, taking during the meetings. And then just um, when we would have our monthly staff meetings, um, I would just have to relay all of that information to the staff at my school. So that's what I was involved in before I started my new job. Well, and congratulations on the new job, Jade. It sounds like you're getting a good, rounded, uh, I guess, variety of experiences there in Northern Alberta in two different teaching contexts, and you've yeah. had some good development in, in different areas, and it sounds like you're, you're teaching different, a number of different subjects with different focuses, so you're, you're getting to be a well-grounded educator early in your career. Tell us about a low moment that you faced. Was there one moment or experience that stands out as, wow, that was really tough? And and how did you get through it? Okay, so this is kind of maybe a bit of a two-part answer. 
So at my former job, um, starting in grade five, um, so I'm, I'm a newer teacher, obviously. I've only taught for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, but I started um, just teaching grade five last, this last year. Um, and just a tough spot that I was put into was teaching a child that was, I guess, coded as having severe oppositional defiant disorder. Okay. Um, I knew about this child um, because the year before I taught in grade four. Mm-hmm. And he was in grade four, but he was taught by another teacher. Um, and in grade four, I just remember, you know, having to just be a support for this other teacher who was teaching him. Um, he didn't get a whole lot of work done in his classroom. He had a lot of, um, outbursts and behavior and he was just very, very hard to control. Um, and he caused her a lot of stress, of course. And I just remember being that, you know, support for her. Um, just a listening ear at the end of the day when she needed to come and just talk to somebody about what was going on with him. Um, And then I got offered the job in grade five at the same school. So lo and behold, I ended up teaching him uh, just this last year. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Uh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, When he came to my class in grade five, um, everybody knew about this little boy. And um, so I had a meeting with my cooperating teachers um, one of which was the vice principal. She taught mm-hmm. science and health. Mm-hmm. And my other cooperating teacher was a literacy resource teacher who taught social studies to grade five. Okay. And we just got together and we made this game plan um, just to develop a new behavior plan for this child. And, you know, every year he would have, you know, a behavior plan in place and nothing seemed to really work. And so we spent a good chunk of the day before um, starting school just getting ready for him and figuring out exactly what we were going to do. Because, Mm. you know, um, everybody was just at the point where if he's not going to be successful in grade five and we're not going to be able to manage his behavior, then it's kind of, um, I don't want to say there's no hope for him, Mm -hmm. but it's like, what else do we do? Mm -hmm. Um, So we got that in place. Um, for him and just like started off strong all of us were on the same page we would check in with each other at the end of the day and just talk about like how things went so yeah Um, but again like with him you know at the beginning of school you know he did have a lot of pushback and he was trying to revert to old behaviors and getting away with things and having his outbursts Um, the biggest thing that helped was just having that support Um, I grew thick skin this last year (laughs) (laughs) Um, and just really learned that, you know, what this child needed out of me was to be consistent, um, to discipline him, but discipline him in love and know that, have him know that I cared about him. Mm -hmm. Um, Just letting him practice and restart when he didn't get off to a good start. Mm-hmm. And just making sure that those consequences were always clear to him right. and not letting him push me um, mm-hmm. beyond what uh, he knew he was able to get away with. Um, mm-hmm. I really stuck to my routine. Uh, like my life depended on it. Yeah. Your um, sanity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't treat him differently um, because I knew if I did, it, w- it would be used against me at a later time for manipulation. Sure. Um, I was always the same in my classroom and how I conducted myself and my routine. And this child, he really depended on me to be always the same. So, you know, a few weeks in, he just fell into routine. And, you know, what I noticed is that he actually loved it. Hmm. He loved having just that consistency all the time. And he would point it out to me if there was something different happening. Right. So even down to like my schedule, I would... I wouldn't switch around my blocks because I knew that would throw him off. Right. Like just, you know, things like that. And then also making sure to have those one-on-one conversations with him about how his day was um, going and, you know, just checking in with him, not always, you know, talking to him when he needed to be redirected. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. He learned very fast that it was always my way or the highway. There was no middle ground for him. 
And he eventually just really stopped um, challenging me or trying to test me because he knew the results were always the same. Hmm. So it was exhausting, but we broke through with him. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, so this has really, sorry, I'll keep going, but this has yeah, really yeah. prepared me for where I am right now because I've taken over a grade five classroom that has had um, just subs for the last month and a half, two months. No. Okay. Yeah. So there's been a lot of inconsistency with these kids and, you know, regardless of where the kids were at before, um, you know, they've been able to get away with quite a bit and, um, you know, just having this first experience with this student has really taught me to just like stick to my routines, stick to being firm with the kids and being consistent with them. And I've really been able to um, develop this new class to um, where I want it to be and have kids meeting my expectations and exceeding them as far as their behavior and even with their academics right now. So yeah. that's, that's fantastic, Jade. And yeah, I, I think you, you mentioned a number of really great takeaways there. I love the part about consistency and, and transparency and communication. And yeah, I, I think every teacher, you know, I, I think this is sort of the first story that's come out in, so far in my podcasting about, you know, that one child that dominates a huge amount of our attention or the class's attention. But yes. I think every teacher has experienced that. And yeah. so thanks, thanks for sharing about that, that time. And yeah, I definitely wish you the best of luck with this new class assignment. It sounds like you'll have some challenges ahead. And like you said, they've they've been in limbo for the last six weeks or so. But yeah, kids need structure. They and do. So yeah, uh, best of luck as you build a new culture in that classroom. Thanks. So what is it, Jade, that it really excites you about education today? And I know you're sort of in the middle of a new environment. And like you said, new challenges. So this might be a tough question. But what is it that ignites your passion for education? Oh, um, I got excited about this as soon as I started teaching. And it was really um, having to do with just developing like cross-curricular projects or mm -hmm. really just project-based learning, right. um, whether that's through um, technology um, or through just other creative means. Um, I've done quite a few like science art science, technology, math, science, math, arts, LA social um, projects. And I find the kids just make such strong connections um, to the curriculum um, right. when we have those um, cross lines there. Um, the fortunate thing is I've had a lot of freedom and encouragement from the admin that I've worked with um, to just creatively plan out all these things, even though some right. of them seem very like, um, very non-traditional, yeah. uh, which has been really awesome. Uh, one great resource that I'd like to point out that I've, you know, looked for ideas or I've gotten inspiration from is the Black Gold Regional Schools Engaging Students website. Okay. They have a ton of um, projects on there um, that are geared towards LA social math and science and hmm. yeah that's just a really really awesome resource that I've looked to they need cool. more more stuff on there though <laughs> um, <laughs> currently in my class I'm doing a science um, I guess like a science art project we're studying the Alberta wetlands in mm -hmm. science right now so I'm having the kids um, create like a mixed medium wetland uh, landscape so either like a fen, bog, marsh, swamp, or pond. And students are supposed to include some animals and plants in that picture. And okay. then um, just put a little blurb on that kind of poster or landscape about the interactions between the animal's land and the plants. Mm -hmm. And originally when I developed this project, I wanted to do it on Google Drawings. Right. But then I found out my kids aren't as um, up to date or connected to Google as what I had hoped. So I'm sure. hoping by the end of the year, we'll get to do more stuff um, involved in Google. But um, that's just what my kids are working on right now as far as projects. They're really excited about it because they all really, really love art. 
Yeah. Um, a lot of the kids in my class are very art oriented, so I'm giving them that opportunity to um, create and show what they know through drawing, um, coloring, and painting. So, yeah, That's I'm excited. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's, that sounds really, really good. And I'll have to check out the Black Gold Regional Schools Engaging Students website. You know, I think middle school, Jade, is such a fantastic opportunity for project-based learning because you really do, uh, you control so much of the timetable. Yes. And so you can spend a whole morning on two or three disciplines and sort of just let those blur together and, and mm -hmm. focus on one project. And you've got that, that freedom for sure. Absolutely. Now, shifting things up a little bit, Jade, looking outside of education, what's another area of passion and learning for you? You know, teachers, all we like to call ourselves lifelong learners. So <laughs> what's another area that you are really enjoying? So outside, like completely outside of work, um, yeah. I would say I enjoy cooking okay. and <laughs> <laughs> um, just learning about you know, cooking, um, I'm very self-taught. I didn't learn how to cook from like my mom or my grandma or anybody. I was kind of all completely on my own when I moved out. Mm -hmm. Um, I've learned a lot, like just through like maybe reading like cookbooks or mm -hmm. going on Pinterest. Um, I watch <laughs> a lot of cooking shows on YouTube Okay. And sometimes I'll just like cook along to them or if I don't have an ingredient in my cupboard that's required, then I'll just substitute something in and see how it goes. Um, but I guess that's like another area of passion where I'm doing a lot of learning. Okay. Um, recently, my husband and I are trying to go vegan. Uh, we haven't wow. had that much. I know. We haven't had that much <laughs> success at it. It's tough. It you is. like meat, you just, yeah, it's tough. But yeah. that's placed a whole new um, challenge on my cooking skills. So I'm trying to research and find different recipes that are geared towards that. Uh, I guess the second area of passion and learning right now for both my husband and I um, would be financial literacy. So we're just trying to educate ourselves in regards to our financial state so this mm -hmm. involves reading a variety of like personal finance books, getting all our papers in regards to our assets, accounts, wills, taxes, and insurance organized, as well as contacting a financial planner to help us plan for the future and just ask for advice. So I guess that's something that I'm really uh, delving into right now. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely with you on the financial literacy side, Jade. Definitely an area that interests me. Uh, can't say the same for the cooking, but my, <laughs> my wife would be right there with you. She loves the cooking shows on Netflix and, yeah. and has a little more curiosity in that area than I do. But all right, very interesting. Mm -hmm. How about a personal habit? Is there something that you do every day or try to do that contributes to your success? Okay, so my, I would definitely say this is a part of like my success as a teacher is just having like good organizational skills. Um, mm -hmm. As far as planning goes, I use planbook.com. And what I love about that is that all the Alberta outcomes are linked on that program. So I can okay. always refer back to um, our curriculum oh. uh, when I'm planning my lessons, which is great. Um, also, just organizing like the classroom. Um, I find kids just like to come into having a very simple looking classroom, or at least for my from my very short, short experience in teaching, I just find for me, it just brings, um, there's just less stress energy in the room. Right. Um, with the kids and even for myself, like I find I'm just a happier person if I can walk into my classroom and things look clean and organized and everything has a place and I know where everything is and the kids know where everything is. Another one would probably be just making lists. Okay. Um, at the end of the day and in the morning when I arrive at school, um, as well as planning at the end of the day rather than the morning. And the only reason why I say that is, you know, I've had a few instances where things have come up 
um, in the morning and I arrive later than expected. And, you know, it's, it's always kind of a bit of a panic if you're not really sure um, what exactly you're doing or photocopying needs to be done or, and somebody's using the photocopier. Um, right. I just find planning at the end of the day so much better. Um, and yeah. this is one that I don't think has been mentioned yet on your podcast. Okay. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't listened to all your episodes, but just asking an expert. So if you're unsure of what to do right. um, or where to go next in the subject, I've saved myself from getting in trouble many, many times <laughs> by just seeking yeah. out um, experts in the school um, mm -hmm. or people just that know what they're doing. Very practical, but you're right. You're absolutely right. I think sometimes we sort of we sort of stress on something and sit on a problem and, and sweat it out. And all, all we need to do is just ask someone who uh, can help us out. One of the phrases you mentioned earlier, Jade, that I really like is the stress energy in the room. Mm -hmm. I really like that. And I don't know if I've heard it before. <laughs> you know what it makes me think of is... You know, for me, uh, I know I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in the minority here, but I really like to make the bed before I leave my bedroom for the day. Yeah. And, I feel, <laughs> and I feel my wife does not care at all, but I, I like to make the bed. And there's something about that that just reduces the stress energy in the room. And I can leave for the day feeling so much more settled. So mm -hmm. I'm going to use that expression going forward. <laughs> Now you're in a grade five situation, Jade. You mentioned your your students aren't aren't completely as connected as, as you were hoping or you were used to. But mm -hmm. what's an ed tech tool that you really enjoy using in your practice these days? Um, well, aside from like Google um, Google Drawings, um, I would say I use my phone quite a bit. Um, in the past, there's just been so many times where. There's like a handout on my desk and the handout's getting handed out to kids and just something as simple as like scanning that document on my phone and then uploading it instantly to Google Drive and then having it as a display on the smart board. I find my mm. phone is just such a handy, handy tool to have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say that gets used the most aside from um, the smart board as well. Um, a couple, I guess maybe websites that I use um, would be like prodigy um, or prodigygame.com for math. It's just mm -hmm. like an avatar game that has um, um, math questions on there and the kids are really, really um, into it. I got my kids um, their logins and passcodes on Thursday and they are just hooked. Like they, they just want <laughs> to play math games and solve math problems. So I find if you can find those um, websites and games that the kids are really engaged in, that really, really helps. Um, mm -hmm. Spellingcity.com is a really, another great resource um, for um, just spelling lists that you might have during the week. Um, ThingLink is another great kind of just an interactive um, presentation medium. You can do um, put in hyperlinks. So it's very, very similar to, I guess, Google Drawings, you could say. Um, Kahoot for making up class quizzes. Right. And Learn Alberta um, has a lot of really great resources on there as well. So there's a variety of things I use. <laughs> That's a great list. Yeah. Tell us about one book that you've been reading lately or maybe one of your all-time faves and tell us why you recommend it. Oh, okay. Um, so education related, I think a lot of teachers, especially in um, the elementary side of things, should read the um, ma not manual, but just a resource for words their way. Um, that's a really, really fantastic um, resource in the classroom as far as spelling. Um, the last school that I had worked at um, got into it, and we've just been, we found that there were huge, huge results from taking on that program as opposed to using um, worksheets and regular spelling tests um, and the kids' spelling. Um, 
non-education related. What have I read recently? Oh, I just finished reading the Marie Kondo book. Um, okay. the, is it The Magical Art of Tidying Up? <laughs> okay. I'm talking about like organization and stuff like that. I went and did the whole purge through my okay. house and it just made me mm. feel so good. Yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed that book. Um, personal finance books. Um, I like Dave Ramsey's The Total Money Makeover. That was a great mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin O'Leary's The Cold Hard Truth on Family, Money, and Kids. I th okay. believe that's what it's called. Right. Um, Smart Couples, Finish Rich by David Bach. And what else? Not education related. Oh, uh, Tim Ferriss's The Four Hour Work Week. That's another mm. great. It's kind of related to personal finance, but it's just about maximizing um, your time. Right. Um, so you can spend it how you want. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a legend. Are you a podcast listener, Jade? And if you are, recommend one podcast for us. Oh, just one podcast. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to say the Dave Ramsey podcast. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, I listen to that one the most. Um, mm -hmm. Second would be Tim Tim Ferriss's podcast. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Tell us about a YouTube channel that you enjoy, and this could be one that maybe you're using in the classroom that's really helpful there, or one that just amuses you in your personal life. There's one channel. It's called the Lettered Classroom, and I've watched a lot of her videos, and I, I can't mm -hmm. tell you the teacher's name off the top of my head, but sure. she's just somebody that's very, she just has a lot of like energy and enthusiasm, a lot of really great ideas of um, certain programming in the classroom. She's launched Words Their Way. She uses Daily Five. Um, she just has a really, really good handle on um, programming in the classroom. Um, okay. So that's just something that I found very, very helpful to me is when I need that inspiration, I'll watch her channel. Cool. I'll definitely check that out. And all of these links will be posted on teachersonfire.net. Oh, perfect. I'll make sure our listeners can find these resources that Jade is sharing with us. Last question, Jade. Just simply, you're at the end of your day. Your brain is fried. You've got no energy left. It's time to relax with your husband. <laughs> uh, or, or maybe he's uh, working. But either way, you're in front of Netflix. What are you watching these days? Oh, goodness. Um, I've been <laughs> re-watching The Office again. Yes. <laughs> we are, too. We are, too. It's, it's hilarious. When I need wait, a good wait. laugh, that's where I go. Oh, it's so reliable. So which <laughs> season are you on right now? Um, or do you know? You, might you know what? Know. Sometimes I don't even go in order. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how many times I rewatched it. <laughs> <laughs> to me, to me, that show is divided up into the Michael era and the yes. post Michael, and the show just feels a little different, you know, on both sides of that divide. But yeah. definitely we've, a classic. We've been watching um, post Michael. <laughs> okay. Yeah, had to remember what that was like. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Jade, what is the best way for people to reach out to you or follow you? Or are you, are you unreachable right now? <laughs> um, you know, I'm not a big social media person. Sure. I'm like probably almost completely off. Um, but you can contact me at my email. It's okay. um, jade.ingles at nsd61.ca. So that's the best place to get me. Well, that will work just fine. And Jade, this has been amazing. Thank you for preparing so well for this and no sharing problem. so many great thoughts with us. Thanks for and listening. I, yeah, and I know <laughs> you're you're in a new spot there in Wabasca, Northern Alberta. So best of luck to you there. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode of Teachers on Fire, where teachers come to share, learn, and be inspired. Please subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review on iTunes, and follow us on Twitter at Teachers on Fire. I'm your host, Tim Cavey, saying goodbye for now, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Teachers on Fire podcast.